Um, we're here to talk about this evening, uh, uh, and obviously I have a vested interest as I was responsible for uh, publishing it, but uh, The Plagiarist in the Kitchen, which is, you say, your first and only cookbook. Yeah. Um, and it's a cookbook, I think, that you could say is prosecuting, a, 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 unlike most book cookbooks which are there to entertain and inform, amuse, it actually has a philosophical uh, kind of premise to it. And that premise is that all cooking, all recipe books are acts of theft, and that this is unique only in that it admits that it's a collection of culinary thefts. Um, you own up to your, uh, you own up to your, your plagiarism, and indeed, indeed the title itself is a, is a, is a, an act of plagiarism. Yeah, the title is an act of plagiarism. It was uh, Julian Barnes wrote a book um, called The Pedant in the Kitchen, and um, when he found out how, when I told him I was doing this, he he um, said, "Well, what is it?" And I said, "Well, it's obviously a homage, Jules." And he said, "Well, that's fine." Um, so. Um, yeah, it, it's, um, there isn't anything new in the kitchen. I mean, if there is anything new, um, I don't know how many of you remember um, Mike Lee's Life is Sweet with Timothy Spall as Aubrey, the chef of a restaurant unwisely titled uh, The Regret Rien. Um, <laughs> anyone, anyone who has no regrets is obviously kind of insentient idiot. Um, but uh, Aubrey's um, idea of cooking, this is at the height of British Nouvelle cuisine, with things like um, liver with jam. Um, I mean, it's r r rarely gross stuff. This was admittedly before one started getting really silly things like foams and gels and um, spiralized courgettes. Yes, and I don't know what a spiralized courgette is, but it sounds like it fits into this particular. I, I, I'd be un, I'd, unlikely to see it on your table anytime soon, Jonathan. I would no, I, I wouldn't actually know what, what it is, uh, or how to do it, and I wouldn't want to do it. Um, but it, I, I, I was interested in this idea of um, the fact that every cookbook is is an act of, of theft. I mean, some of them are good acts of theft, but many aren't. The other thing I would hope about this is that, is that it's written by um, someone who, who can read and write. That's myself. At the moment, there, there's a, a, a school, an uh, informal school of youngish architectural critics, Hatherley, Murphy, um, Wainwright, etc., who all write beautifully. Um, and unlike uh, my generation, or quite a lot of members of my generation, they don't all want to be in bed with Norman Foster and so on, and they're, they're not, not a load of star fuckers. Um, this has not happened with, with cookery writing. It's gone from bad to worse. It, it, it's it's a, the province of and there are a few exceptions, evidently, but I mean, it does seem to be inhabited by kind of uh, neo post literates. It's an interesting classification, <laughs> but there you are. Um, That's good. We... And um, who, who don't realize that the wheel has, you know, long, been, long since been invented, and there's, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. it, 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 it it's there. Every, everything that's added on cla classic dishes with a twist, God almighty. <laughs> um, the, 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 the entire world of uh, the entire foodie lexicon of artisan and craft and sauce. I'm going to source some beans. It means you go to the supermarket and you buy some beans. But you, um, <laughs> and, Everything organic. I mean, I showed years ago, I did a film, a series of food films in the early part of this century, and we showed how to organicize things, which is you just get some perfectly normal vegetables and you, and you bathe them in mud. Um, <laughs> the, and the, the fetishization of things like virgin olive oil and so on, extra virgin. How can you be an extra virgin? I mean, it's, it's, it's a quality which is probably useful if you're a nun. 
but, um, but otherwise um, incomprehensible. On the subject of nuns, I was in a restaurant in uh, Exxon, but I don't really think about nuns unless they're very unsuitably dressed in... in Valerian in, Borachek movie. But, yeah, Borachek. I mean, Franchi is good at that too. Yeah. Um, but um, I, in, in Aix-en-Provence, in, in a restaurant, there, 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 there are a whole load of nuns tucking in. And the chief nun, I don't know what you, you've called a chief nun. Mother um, Superior? Appeared to be the late John Smith. The, <laughs> not, um, <laughs> much missed, um, the man who, had he lived, would have spared his flair. Um, but it was quite a re re remarkable resemblance. Um, and so maybe he just thought, well, it's all too much. I'm going to go into hiding. So, so there, is a, there is a kind of a manifesto a aspect to this book, isn't there? I mean, you're, you're, this, is, this is, you know, you were 15 years uh, uh, restaurant critic for The Times, putting, as I think you said at the time, your mouth where other people's money was to go. And, <laughs> and you're also famously, uh, you know, you cook every, uh, people who've tasted your home cooking. I've always said, what an extraordinary cook you are. So these, in a way, this recipe is a sort of a riposte to the, the kind of the foodie brigade on one hand and the, and, the, and the people who watch daytime television cookery shows on the other. It's kind of, it's, it's, a, it's a pin in a way to, to sort of culinary classicism, isn't it? The idea that... I yes, think but it's, a, it's also, I mean, these various groups who you want to put the boot into. Um, I mean, that's, that's the important thing. Get your retaliation in first. <laughs> um, and you've done that by, in between each of the recipes in the book, there are reflections on plagiarism. And then it's kind of the idea of, 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 of cook, cook recipes being sort of, it's almost like a hall of mirrors, isn't it? One person steals from another, steals from another, and, and even being able to find where the theft originally, the original act of theft is quite difficult to... Um, and you taught, there's a wonderful phrase you use, crypto, cryptomnesia which you say has a paramount role to play in the kitchen. Yeah, that? It, well, it, it's the um, delusion that something that you have um, thought up is your own, uh, rather than something which you've borrowed, which, I mean, and it happens if you, if you write professionally, you kind of make notes, and you look back, and you don't know where the note has come from, but you kind of like that phrase, and you, and, and you use it. And someone will tell you, well, actually, that's not yours. It comes from X, Y, or Z. Um, and I think that the, the, the same, um, same process is at work with, with lots of um, professional cooks. They think that they are the first person to have um, uh, used cold risotto to make little overloids which they've stuffed with something. And then you find that the... the People have been doing this in Sicily since the beginning of time and in Rome. Um, so there, there, it is, it's forgivable, I think. But um, at, at the same time, one, one should probably check, I think. <laughs> um, I think there's only one original recipe in the book, uh, and it ends with the, the phrase, chuck, chuck in the bin. Um, do you want to tell us about the, uh, that? I'm just kind of curious that you decided to include it almost as a sort of, a, as a sort of control test to show well, the, that the, originality the, is a bad idea at the yeah, best of times. I mean, the, the book is quite didactic in a way. I mean, I've, I mean I've never, unbelievably I've, didn't, 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 didn't didn't didactic. Souffles gain nothing from being made with flour. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Chipolata is a, slur is a slurry in a kid's condom. I love... <laughs> Abattoir slurry. On pot, 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 pot au feu. A crock of folklore and very bogus science is attached to this dish. Ignore. <laughs> I mean, it's brilliant. It's full of, uh, I mean, you know, strong opinions, strongly expressed. <laughs> nothing, you say at one point, going back to your organic point, nothing is sustainable, which I think is a, is a great... No, sustainability is kind of one of the great shibboleths of the age. And, it, and it, it's clearly a load of balls. I mean, architects go on and on about being sustainable, but there is nothing less sustainable than making a building. It's... it's wasteful of energy, it buggers up streets. London is like a kind of perpetual building site, and there's nothing sustainable about that. And they pull down buildings so quickly now. I mean, you know, stuff which was built in the 90s is now, be is now being pulled down. Um, that that is equally unsustainable, and I'm afraid, I mean, there are big announcements to make. None of us are sustainable. Not one of us is sustainable. <laughs> We're all going to die. Um, and the, it, 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 is, it is 
preposterous, but it's not so surprising that it should come from food world and architecture world, which are both sort of from a, they're both linguistically insentient. Um, you, you make a distinction early on, which is maybe an important one, the difference between art and craft. Um, I think you stole that insight. From, I stole that from Gore Vidal. Yeah, who probably yeah. stole it from someone else. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, uh, but you say that uh, art may concern itself with expression, a quality that has no role in craft. Yeah, quite. I mean, craft is useful for making rattan chairs and things. But um, people who say they express themselves through their food are delusional or foaming. I think you say. You well, say they that. are. I mean, I think I think, I think, I think they're I think they're really crazy. But a lot of very very stupid people in kitchens. I mean, you know, sort of, um, uh, I mean, occasionally you'll get you know Roly Lee and people like this who've actually you know can read and write and they're educated and 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 bright and so on. But I mean, the vast majority. I'm used to come across these people and they 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 you know, p petition you to write about their bloody awful restaurants. But Rowley would probably agree with you, and I, I'm, sure a lot of, I'm sure a lot of chefs, particularly chefs who've run great restaurants for a long time, that you say at one point, going back to zero in order to reach a place which has be been reached many times before, which is a sort of a, you could say that's almost, a, if you applied that in architecture, that would be a sort of classicism, wouldn't it? A kind of that you're, you're continually striving to recover something that has been done better in the past? It would probably be a cave. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what's the culinary equivalent of a cave? Well, it, it, well there's, there's a ham sandwich. There's a recipe for a ham sandwich in the book, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, why, why not? I mean, if it's proper ham sandwich, it's, 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 it's fine. I mean, I don't, I don't think... You say a uh, ham sandwich where the ham tastes of pig rather than... Uh, what was it? In, uh, yes, I think some I can't remember. Factory what floor, industrial. Yes, in the, um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't really a question, more a, more a, more a, a pointed observation. But we, I, one question I did want to ask you is that you're, um, having read this book in shortly be, after I'd read your um, brilliant, I think, evocation of your childhood, uh, sort of one of the best books about the 1950s ever ever published an encyclopedia of myself it's clear that your 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 tastes in food were um, were laid down early your your mother mother was a good cook and you traveled to France a lot as a as a as a child and a lot of the cooking in this in this book is French cooking and at some point I think in this book you say that you, you taught yourself to cook through Mastering the art of French cookery and practicing all those recipes. There was, I mean, in terms of craft, you, you're not starting. It's not just going into a kitchen and making st stuff up. No, it's, I, I, I followed that book very, um, very, very rigorously, um, and I, you know, I don't didn't wouldn't leave out a step in any recipe. And one, once you've done that and you, you're kind of practicing, it's, it's like doing scales or something, um, or you know. Rond des gens, or, or speaking properly. I mean, you, you you need to learn to do these things before. You can't do any kind of art without um, craft, and I, I don't think you can do any. Uh, I don't think it makes cooking um, an art at all. I mean, I really don't think it is an art, but it's a, a craft. But it's a craft which has to be has to be learned, and you can learn it in various ways. And I, I, always, I suspect that learning from a book is better than learning from kind of going to some cookery school. I don't know. I've never been to a cookery school. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't despise them at all, but I, I think it's kind of a lazy thing to do if you, you could do it at home. But you're, um, but you're interestingly quite... I mean, you know, you're not, you're not hidebound by the correct way of doing anything. I mean, like you say, you... You're, you don't like extra virgin olive oil, and you say that you don't. I don't. Like I, it. Don't, I don't. I don't dislike it. I think. I think it's a waste of money, and it gives me a sore throat. It's so peppery. Um, but you're also. You say that, that cassoulet, which is one of those dishes, which you know, will arguments rage about what should or shouldn't be in a cassoulet, and what the authentic cassoulet. You're not much interested in authenticity, are you? No, I think it, it, you know, if you want to get sort of or, 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 or authentic. Um, Street food. I mean, you're, you're going to get botulism, aren't you? <laughs> um, you, you uh, there, there's nothing to be gained from authenticity. I mean, the French idea of, of, 
uh, of this is, is quite interesting. The, the French colonial aspiration was to turn everyone in Mali and Algeria and God knows where else into a French man or woman um, because they thought that the French thought that was the greatest thing you could be. Completely unlike the, um, the, the, the British aspirations for people in India and for what became Pakistan. Um, but the same process um, is in play with, with the French attitude to other people's cooking. They don't see any value in reproducing what is cooked in Taormina or something. They take the dish that's made in Taormina and they improve it and they try and make it French. Um, and so um, I, th I think that that is, um, that is very pertinent to any comparison between what, what you get in in Britain and what you get in France, um, that that the you know what's so good about being authentic? I mean, I I don't understand why why it's rated. But you also you have there's a persistent theme in the book. You talk about Cecil Sharp and English, the English uh, folklore society, and how it's a great passage where you so you're basically collecting these folk songs. You'd go into pubs in the West Country. And as soon as the guys knew that he was in collecting uh, tr traditional songs and rewarding them with beer <laughs> or a plug of baccy, they would they would just tell him, "Yeah, this is very, this is authentic. This has been sung in 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 my family for for generations." So the, the sort of the idea of an invented, authentic tradition is there in food as well. Yes, it is. I mean, the you know, most famous. Um writer about food of the past half century is Elizabeth David, and she, she wasn't really a cook, she, she was a right. collector. Yeah. Um, a, a, it was a, a kind of folklorist, um, and wrote very well, which is why her books um, uh, are still read today. Um, but a lot of the recipes are approximate to say the least. <laughs> and there's one recipe which I put in there. I mean, it's a dish that I've made on a number of occasions called la sauce, or la sauce du, du fin de médoc. And I asked a friend of mine who's got um, a restaurant in Bordeaux, La Tupina, uh, which is my favorite restaurant in the world. Um, whether he knew this, this is dish. the one you gave eleven out of ten. Yeah. Times, yeah. Um, <laughs> whether he knew it, and he said, "I've never heard of it." So he asked a, 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 a friend of his who teaches the um, history of gastronomy at Bordeaux University whether he knew this dish, and he said, "No, no, just no, no such thing." And I think it's it, what happened was that someone uh, heard that this um, English gentlewoman was collecting recipes and made it up and gave it to us. So it's actually it's actually very very good. But um, no no one no, you know it's it's un, unknown in the Medoc. Um, and so so she was in a way gulled in the way that I suspect um, Cecil Sharp was and uh, Sabine Baring Gould who to whom we owe Uncle Tom Cobley. Um, uh, and there were obviously other people who've done that sort of collecting, and people who collect knickknacks in, in, in the same same way. But I mean that 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 is it, it's um, a kind of false history, harmlessly false. Um, I mean, one of the things that you love, and you say that you love most, uh, uh, the cooking of Alsace is. Uh, at one point, you say it never changes, and that's why I love it. Uh, I just wondered because you also say that English, you quite like being an English plagiarist because well, there's a brilliant phrase you say, the English have a shrugging indifference to their gastronomic heritage. <laughs> and there aren't that many English recipes, although there is a, there is a sort of an, a, a, a German recipe for Lobscouse, which is um, uh, what you call the Scouser's um, beef tripping at one point, you call the Scouser's Madeleine. But, um, well, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Better than the Madeleine. I mean, I but why Alsace? Alsace, um, it simply doesn't. It seems to have been 
impervious to all fashions in food. I, d I, d I don't know why. I mean, but it, it um, that's certainly not the case in a lot of eastern and northeastern France, but in Alsace and Strasbourg and so on, Mutzig, um, it is always the same, and that w which is um, which is what's so attractive about it. Uh, um, you also say, I mean, talking going back to childhood, that you started cooking. There was a fashion for men cooking in the nineteen sixties. Yeah, which came from Len, Len Dayton, right? So it's and cooking suddenly became cool and something that you were impressed. Yeah, well, because Michael Caine did it in the Ypres file, you know, in sort of um, <laughs> grinding his own coffee and that sort of thing, which, um, um, yeah, it, it seemed great when you're 17. I mean, it, it sort of fell out of favour again. It's been, so maybe Jamie Oliver's re revived that for a whole generation of men. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't think you'd bite on that one. Um, I just thought we might. I thought we might go through some of the things that you you strongly dislike, which which some of which are surprising. You don't like herbs. You, you don't like basil at all. I don't like herbs. No. Um, uh, I like spices. I, I like. No, you like saffron in particular. I like saffron. I like rasel hanout. I like um, cumin. I like um, uh, pimenton, Spanish pimen. I smoked paprika. Um, from Estremadura, um, not though from Murcia. Um, <laughs> well, there's a difference. I mean, in Murcia, it's not smoked. Um, and I, I can't think what else I use. But I, I, herbs, I, I find um, uh, they're a bully in many instances. Basil in particular. Yeah, but but, but I, I, there's a lot of very nasty basil around, which is doesn't have the kind of glossy leaves that one used to get, and the leaves now seem to are mad. And I don't know whether this genetic—I've got nothing against genetic modification, but I mean, <laughs> I think that maybe this is um, this is the result of uh, of such a process. I don't know. You um, you don't like fine dining, which you say is an anagram of tosser. <laughs> <laughs> Fine dining is is, um, is 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 dreadful. It's to do with um, it's like jargon. I mean, you know, yeah. slang, as Jonathan Green will tell you, is is the poetry of the gutter. Um, um, jargon is the um, prose of the executive estate, and. Um, I think it's people from executive estates who who like fine dining, and um, I mean, I I you know I far sooner eat a McDonald's than go to a fine diner. Yeah, fine dining and pims another thing you don't like. I hate pims, <laughs> but that's to do with with that kind of terminal Englishness where people wear striped blazers and women wear kind of hyper frump outfits, and um, everyone. I mean. It, Pretends that they're kind of some arist. It's, it's. I mean, one of the one of the attractive and lovely things. I mean, the book is not um, is not illustrated with with sort of uh, gastro porn pictures of food either, is it? They're they're abstract um, images that you have you have taken yourself, which have absolutely nothing to do with food in any in any. <laughs> no, I mean, I think I mean, think. Well, the the food photography has become rather cliched, and that's why I wanted to avoid it. Uh, um, yeah. Um, but the um, but it is it is a functioning cookbook, and I mean one of the things that yes, uh, it is it is fully you've, functioning. You've, you've, um, <laughs> requires no prosthesis or anything. And <laughs> doesn't limp around. You've tested all the uh, you've tested all the recipes. I, on, I only included things which I've cooked myself at some stage in my life. And even I mean, the, I had the ill-fated ham and fig tart. Or the ham and fig tart was a tragedy because I thought, well, ham, raw like ham, ham and fig, very good together. Um, so I cooked them together and it really didn't work out um, and that was the one which got chucked in the bin which you included as I say for it but what about um, you know if you're st stood in front of your fridge Jonathan and you've got a set of ingredients and you can't be asked going and buying new ones and you make something out of the ingredients in your fridge out of the leftovers isn't that not bordering on the edge of being original creative um, I don't look at it that way. <laughs> but, um, no, I, 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 
Well, you've, I never, you've never had that happy moment where you put two things together and you think, actually, that works rather brilliantly. I hadn't thought of that before. I don't know, maybe. I, 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 it, it's, it, obviously, the book is um, absolutely mendacious. So, um, <laughs> um, the, so the, the, I, I like that. So it's a lie within a lie. That's even better. Yeah, brilliant. Um, but I mean, there, there, uh, there is a, um, and also you I mean, there's a brilliant passage where you, you, some, you something is described as homemade, and you said, you say, <laughs> why is that a, why is that a positive thing? Have you seen most people's homes? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's wrong with proper biscuits that are made in a factory, like Carl's water biscuits or Nan's oat cakes? Nan's oat sure. yeah. cakes. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't, I. This sort of cult of home baking, home this, home that, seems ridiculous when at last in Britain one has got um, very good bakers, not just in London, but, but all, all over the place. You're also disinclined, you say, to try, uh, you know, you say uh, about ethnic recipes, it's futile to steal what you can't understand. So you say you don't really try and cook Chinese or Indian or... No, I was brought up eating an awful lot of Indian food because my father had been in India during the war and had lots of spices which he'd had put into boxes which had been soldered so to keep them fresh. And that, uh, we're still eating those kind of 15 years after the end of the war. Um, and um, I, I haven't been to an Indian restaurant for about 12 years now. Don't, I don't never rarely interested me that much. You quite, you quite like a bit of Middle Eastern food, though, don't you? I like Middle Eastern food, and I like North African food. But you don't usually make it, is that what you're... Um, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't make it. Um, I... If the other fellow can do it better, let him. Yes, yeah. and Chinese food, which I, I adore, but I mean, I adore some. Um, but I, I, I don't, um, I would never dream of trying to to cook it any more than I'd start writing an ideograms. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's, um, Although, yeah, it's an interesting thought. Maybe if we sell the Chinese rights to this book, we, I can fulfill that dream for you. <laughs> right. um, I was thinking, you, one of the things you do say, which I guess the, the Elizabeth David uh, discussion is, is to steal from the best. And there's a brilliant shepherd's pie recipe here that you lifted from <laughs> Anthony Burgess. No, I didn't know. There's, uh, uh, it, no, the 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 Lancashire no, it's not hot, it's it's Lancashire hot Lancashire, pot. Lancashire hot pot. Yeah, but that's word for word. But I asked him. At least I asked his. Um, I asked the foundation if it was okay, and they were fine with that. They're fine with it, and his shade is very happy. <laughs> <laughs> the other, which the other, which is a, 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 a again a recipe which I haven't uh, tried, but I'm planning to, is the gigo à la clinique. Which is from the Alice Topless. Yeah, that's stolen. But I, I couldn't, I couldn't reproduce that word for word because someone stole my Alice B. Topless cookbook, so I, I had to do it from memory. But it's, it's a fantastic recipe for anyone who can get hold of a veterinary I mean, syringe. Do you think that this? <laughs> it, it does have a veterinary. It, I have to say, mostly in the book, you don't. Um, you, you know, this book is within the, the reach in terms of ingredients and equipment of the, the most people's kitchens. Well, I mean, what, the thing about ingredients, I mean, it's a, quite an important point, is that. The fewer ingredients, the better. Um, I have a kind of loathing. I mean, I, the, the three most depressing words in the English language, according to Kingsley Amos, were red or white. Um, I asked a friend of mine what he thought were three most depressing words, and he said, new comedy series. <laughs> um, uh, um, um, mine are all the trimming. <laughs> um, and uh, which I, I like to get one thing on a plate. I mean, in Italy, if you ask for a steak, you get a steak, and you don't get garnish, which belongs actually to the world of fine dining. You don't get, get squiggles of um, some unidentified kind of liquid which have come out of a squeezy bottle, making a little pattern. Um, you just get one thing, and I, I find this far more satisfying than, than a, 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 the sort of overladen dish which um, still persists to this day in, in Britain. 
do, uh, do you, I mean, you, given that you spent so much, so much time eating in restaurants, I mean, you, you, when you finished doing that, did you, do you still eat out as, as much as you did and, and, and no. with as much pleasure? No, no, it was a job. I mean, I got paid for doing it. Um, <laughs> and it, 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 it became an increasingly tiresome job. Um, and uh, especially as I kept on getting directed to, you know... Aberystwyth. Write, well, Aberystwyth and Gannets really was something else. And on the <laughs> way to the loo from the dining room, there was this bucket of kind of opaque brownish liquid, which I, th I think the, in, in, uh, in Pantone... The, the shade is called Baby's First Try. Um, and this gunk was put over every dish. It was quite the most horrible place I've, I've ever been in my life. But to my astonishment, I, I think uh, I looked, looked up a few years ago and it was still going. Um, and which suggests something about the, you know, the taste of the Welsh. But I mean, you know, Wales is a country the size of Belgium and hasn't invented its own alcoholic drink, whereas Belgium has sort of 800 different beers and God knows how many different kinds of gin. Uh, the, the, some, uh, that's to do with, obviously, chapel and uh, uh, yeah, that I mean, malarkey. I think that you, you, you've written about the uh, implausible books. I think the, wasn't it John Knox's, uh, the John Knox cookbook? Sort of a thousand ways with a parsnip. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That there was a terrible, I mean, that there was... What, a, a kind of a break in the in, in in what you might call traditional peasant cooking in this country that was occasioned by combination of Protestantism and and the Industrial Revolution, but that doesn't seem to have affected the cooking of no, a lot of Northern Europe. You're amazing and Magnetic North series. I mean, one of the great joys of that is the occasional forays into 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 the cooking of those places. Well, it was going, originally going to be called herrings and schnapps, but um, some Bright Spark at the BBC couldn't understand what that meant. <laughs> Although herrings, I, there was a, I think Alan Davidson said that in order to be of, of marriageable kind of quality, you had to have at least, a, a woman had to have at least a hundred ways of preparing a herring in Denmark. Oh, qu quite, quite probably, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yeah, but, but, but the industrialisation of Britain happened much earlier than that of Germany yeah. and so on. And it happened in cities. I mean, in, in France, you'd be, well, Germany anyway, you'd be driving through country, countryside and you'd come across the steelworks. I mean, er, early steelworks or early forge or, or something like that, rather in the way that in, in Derbyshire. But other, otherwise, you've got these kind of concentrations. And so people kind of left the land. It, it wasn't that they left the land and went, went to the cities and lost the... And of stuff that was passed down, um, that that didn't happen because of the kind of uh, the demographic shape of of the industrial revolution elsewhere. Do you feel? I mean, that again, you say that at various points that the, there's a sort of an advantage in in being English in that you don't have a a, 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 a tradition, a clear tradition that you, it's easier. English food is always borrowed and stolen and and kind of improvised. Um, and do you think that means a lot of people you will hear now say that London's the best place for food in the world, which uh, is difficult to... Well, I think, I think that they've been saying that for a long time. And the I, gastronomic I think, revolution. The gastronomic revolution and so on. I mean, I think the thing is that um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm not in London often enough to, to, to be able to assess that. But um, what I would say is that the part of the... Um, culinary world which was most expertly done um, during the time that I, I took a professional interest in it um, was PR. The PRs were much better at their job and in convincing everyone that how, how good cooking was in Britain than a lot of the chefs who they represented. Um, and uh, th this is a, you know, it's a, a broadly English um, trait that um, you know that lies um, <laughs> uh, are believed. That there's you know there's 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 not enough questioning and, and you scrutiny. know scrutiny and um, bloody-minded cynicism. <laughs>
Yeah, well, there's plenty of bloody-minded cynicism in this in this cookbook. But you say it's going to be your only cookbook. You feel that you're the best. You've given your all. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've done it. I've retired. I might become a manager now. <laughs> <laughs> um, or a philosopher like Joey Barton. <laughs> yeah, well, the book is studded through through with philosophy. I mean, there's a, there's there's, some, there's, 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 there's even there are even some heartwarming stories. I, I was I was amazed to read about the because I know you as a man who loves to eat hair. But um, there's the very, very diverting story of Levi in the book, which yeah. perhaps, perhaps you ought to tell, just to show that there is a, <laughs> there is a warm. Yeah, my, my, my caring side. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, at a place that we were living in France, in the country, we had a hare who used to... Um, it's a good recipe, by the way. Yeah, but I, 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 I say uh, at the end of the recipe for hare, which the only good recipe I know, which is effectively for yeah, la, la wayal or jugged hair or wh whatever you call it. I mean, it's all more or less the same as you cook it for a very long time. And I say, um, because of this hair who used to come and sunbathe and um, was sheltered from the, the chasse, I mean, wherever you are in France at weekends, there are thousands of gung-ho maniacs wearing high-vis clothes shooting at anything, <laughs> mostly shooting at themselves, but um, <laughs> at each other, rather. Um, but the, the hair we became very fond of and gave it a name, Levi, from Levi the Leveret. Um, and I've never eaten hair since, and I, I don't think I could bear to, but I give the recipe and I say, you know, you serve it with buttered noodles and gilt. <laughs> um, <laughs> You don't show any, any such show. There's a brilliant recipe for spatchcock chicken where you say, you know, don't hold back. Rough love is perfectly all right when you're crushing a chicken because well, it's dead. Love, yes, yeah. But I mean, there, there's that's a dead chicken. Right? Yeah, an extraordinary thing by, by um, what's he called? Anthony Bourdain, celebrated chef, who, who writes about some other chef and how he fondles a fish. And it's like you think, Christ, this is like sort of some. Some Jimmy Savile of the deep. You know. <laughs> um, um, very, very worrying. That was in St Stephen Poole's great book. Um, you, you, you aren't what you eat. Yeah, I mean, the, which, which is a, a brilliant kind of uh, deception of foodie culture. I mean, it seems to me in the book you, you've got you know good ingredients, uh, and you know treat the treat the treat the treat the ingredients with respect. Recipes of blueprints rather than kind of, uh, it, I mean, it's common sense in a lot of ways, isn't it, that your approach to food? Yes. Uh, I mean, the thing is that it is problematic in England in, in that um, many, much English produce is much inferior to what is the norm in the southern half of France, well, most of France, Italy, and so on. I mean, ve vegetables and Fruit in particular. Fruit tastes of something other than water. I mean, the, you know, the Dutch have an awful lot to answer for, for growing things hydroponically. Um, and, yeah, produce in, 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 in general is, is, is better elsewhere. And it's also not nearly so expensive. Um, And you don't need to play around with it and gussy it up in, in the way that um, is always going to be a temptation to anyone cooking in Britain, because you need to make it make it taste of something. And do, I sort of get the feeling you're not a man for the you know, menu de degustation, the sort of the twenty the twenty course kind of. Uh... No, I, 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 that that is again something to do with fine dining and Michelin stars, which are kind of strike me as being kind of, um, uh, you know, a place has got three Michelin stars, it's worth avoiding. <laughs> really, I'm serious. No, no, I, I know, mean, I know. you know, go, if you've been to Lamelois, my God. But you, you, you still eat out in Marseille? Yeah, but not in the, the flash places. I mean, the flash places all sell uh, weir base. Um, and there's a weir base charter, which, you know, is sort of, Medieval writing on a bit of leatherette, which I think is you know <laughs> extremely dodgy. But Weirbes is actually it's a old 
Provencal word, which means we saw you coming. <laughs> um, and there, there, there are many good restaurants which, which don't do that and which, which serve excellent and fairly simple, well, very simple cooking, but expertly done. I mean, the, 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 the plainer it is, the better. Um, but that doesn't mean to say that it's like, you know, uh, good plain cooking in the English sense. The, 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 you know, the, there's no excess. I mean, no, no, uh, the, it's just the, the, it's like the Italian thing. I mean, it's a very Italian city. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, a lot of it, a lot of the recipes, it seems to me too in the book, where, which you do is you, you, borrow the, you borrow or steal a recipe and then you'll do one thing slightly differently because you prefer it that way, which is, gives, gives you the sort of the sense of that you've, you've made a little inflection. Like the, you steal the meatball, Mrs. Scorsese's, Scorsese's mum's meatball recipe from Goodfellas that she writes about, but, and you don't put in oregano or oregano because she recommends that it makes it repeat on you and you don't like herbs anyway, so yeah. that's fine. But she says, no, on no account, fry the meatballs, but you, on every account, do fry the meatballs. I do, I do, yeah. Because absolutely. you like the taste, presumably. Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't want to offend any member of the Goodfellas clan. I mean, <laughs> obviously. Uh, especially not Joe Pesky. Um, but, um, yes, I think it's better if you, d you do fry them first. But, I mean, if you go to a really good, you know, it Italian-American restaurant like Warberos, in um, the North Bronx, uh, I think they will. They, I got the feeling they kind of fry their meatballs, but I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's interesting when you say that about great restaurants. You, you make the point in the book that great restaurants often their menus they don't have a problem with originality. Often their menus don't. The, a lot of the great institutions, their menus don't change all the time. No, they don't change, and I think they re the 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 more intelligent a chef, the more. The, realizes that, you know, as Paul Bocuse said, I mean, he really is a great chef, and the, the, you, uh, a chef is lucky to create one dish in his lifetime. Um, and uh, Bocuse um, perceives of being a chef as someone who's passing on the baton, who's, who's taking what is already there and playing around with it a bit, and, but doing essentially just trying to make it better, which usually means kind of losing you know, half a dozen ingredients which, which have been appended to it down the years. Trimmings, yeah. Well, not necessarily the trimmings, but the, the sheer number of herbs which are, can, can, you know, cancelling each other out and that, 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 that sort of thing. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, and again, one of your uh, more d'autombe pronouncements about risotto is that wine adds nothing. Well, in my opinion, it doesn't. I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. Um, what, what, what is what it's supposed to do, because it's not like making, say, a beurre blanc, where it's absolutely essential. I mean, you've just, it's just lost. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, there's a lot of wine which is worth losing. But you're, um, it's, a, it's a brilliant, uh, the risotto recipes work, but worth, I mean, there's a lot of things that you shouldn't do, like go and have a fag halfway through. And <laughs> well, that's a, that applies to cooking in general. I mean, you, do, you don't go, you know, out onto the street with a snout cast. <laughs> um, you, you you know stick stick to, stick your, to the stove stick to your last mate stick to your last yeah and don't serve it with uh, you know lots of horrible garnish um, what was the last good meal that you ate in London and where was it um, I don't know, uh, ate quite nice uh, uh, honey and smoke honey and smoke yeah that was good pigeon pigeon, pigeon very pigeon, good pigeon yeah excellent um I mean, you know, it was, it, was, it was nothing extraordinary, but it was, um, it was, it was quite pleasant. And you're not, um, you never, I've never seen you in a restaurant scribble down uh, a recipe, think, oh, this is good, I must do this at home. Do you sort of feel you have everything, your, your as it were, your, um, your repertoire is, is mostly in that, uh, in bet between that. I mean, it's, it's not a fat book, but it's, it's full of goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a pig. Um, <laughs> nothing wrong with a pig. No, nothing wrong with a pig. John keeps pigs, by the way. Um, I do. And um, and I remember. So I, I, one of these things I was actually talking about Snow Wilson and Dusty Hughes's Pig Night. Um, very fine screenplay from Snow's um, Snow's play, 
um, which they were aggrieved not to get a grant for, because the, um, the first shot is of a man um, uh, and a pig at it together. <laughs> and um, Snoo was particularly miffed at this because um, he said, well, it's in East Anglia, for God's sake. <laughs> Um, maybe we should open it up for a few more questions, um, if people are, are. Thank you both so much. Yes, we have questions. We have strong opinions, strongly expressed, of course. That's the uh, that's on the recipe. Do you feel feel you? feel free to disagree. It's a, it's a, it's it's a it's a book that, that that begs for disagreement and and wrangling of all kinds. But it is very cookable. From I'd have to say, the recipes, home tested, work very well. Yeah, I was interested in the analogy between dance and uh, cooking and how you know that might work as uh, quite well. And I was just wondering if you could sort of say more about that. I would if I could hear what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I was interested in the analogy between uh, dance and folk Dan dance and folk dance and, and, cook and cookery. And I just thought that something that one could go with further and was interested in your thoughts on it. Well, in the sense of getting uh, things being passed down from generation to generation. Yeah, it seems to me uh, something that's quite effervescent that, you know, you, you just, it doesn't last. Um, it just happens on, in the moment. And uh, yeah, the idea that there's a, there are traditional forms and then there are forms where things are kind of put together in a kind of international stealing from different sources, which are kind of have a lineage somewhere that are kind of cultural expressions. I don't get what that's got to do with folk dance. I mean, incest and folk dancing, as Arnold Back said, you know, those are the two things to avoid. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I don't know anything about folk dancing, so I have no opinion on whether they're kind of, whether there's a kinship between cooking and folk dancing. Um, I'm always rather horrified by Morris dancing. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking of like, say, something like the tango, which is. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah. I wouldn't call that. So, which is, has a kind of very traditional that. route and belongs to a particular place, and then maybe how it's danced around the world is something quite. It has mixed in different bits and pieces from ballroom or from other sources. Um, I've seen. Tango and rather, rather enjoyed. I saw a tango class on the steps of Clermont Ferrand Cathedral once, which was rather beautiful. But I, 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 I don't know whether dance spreads in the same way uh, uh, as food. I mean, anything which is not dependent on a language will, will you know, spread. I mean, you get the same buildings all, all over the world now. I mean, you know, London is looking increasingly like some Midwestern city. Um, but I mean, and, I, eating, I, and probably eating Midwestern food. I mean, you know, barbecue restaurants much more likely to be springing up than a, a fine dining French restaurant now. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any more thoughts, comments? Gentlemen, it looks like you're yeah, very keen to, to see <laughs> Yeah. That's right. I don't need the microphone. If you wouldn't mind for it. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. <clears throat> Hello, um, John. Did you like Keith Floyd? Because a lot of what you're saying sounds like Keith's philosophy. Keith Floyd? Um, yeah, I keep it Keith, simple. Prefer no. Keith Floyd to Pink Floyd. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, because I mean, Keith was not pompous. Um, he didn't do 20, 20 five-hour guitar solos. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I like Keith. Uh, good th he was a good thing. Um, he's, a, he's one of a very small number of TV chefs that you do like, though, isn't he? Let's be honest. Yeah, he was the best, without a doubt. I spent a week with him in Manchester once and was greeted every morning about nine o'clock um, saying, you know, let's go and have a grab. Um, and I said, no, because oh, we're doing a shameful TV program together. Um, <laughs> and I'd say, well, it's six o'clock when, when we wrap. And, and Keith would then go and find a member of the staff to drink with, because he was convinced if he drank with someone else, um, he didn't have a drink problem. 
Um, and, um, it, 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 was, it was rather distressing because he was hauling kind of junior members of the front desk to, to the bar um, and uh, it had to be explained to the, 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 the manager that, that this was, you know, Mr. Floyd and this is how he behaved. Method acting, but I, yeah. I miss him. He, 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 he was very, very good on TV, but there's nothing to do with him being a good chef. Um, he had that sort of particular charm of kind of small town Lothario, which, which um, work, works, works very well. It worked on me. Anyway. <laughs> Have you got a favourite in the book, Jonathan? That you, your your signature dish. What's your signature I don't, dish? I don't. I, I don't I, I've, I've, I've given up. I've given up that um, that, that lark. Um, no, I mean, I, I, the, you have cooked. You weren't you on Celebrity Master Chef at one point? N no. <laughs> no. Definitely were on one of those TV shows. No, I was. I was asked to be a judge on one of them. That's once. right. Yeah. And I. I. I and. <laughs> The person who um, I judged to be the best was the was the simplest, um, the, the least fancy. Um, but that's my only experience of, of that. I mean, I, I did make this, you know, do these three films about um, the state of British cooking. Um, and they're not they're not in the um, they're not in the they're not in, not in the season because they're completely you know. Um, but you they, can they're they're, they're on. They'll be, they'll be some, some of them are on the DVD and they'll others, be on YouTube and YouTube, way. yeah. Um, right, well, for Vimeo now, Mead Shrine. Should you want to, I think a lot of Jonathan's films, you have to watch them in three bits. But it's... no, you don't. Not on Vimeo, don't you? No. Um, you don't have to watch them. In three bits. <laughs> but it's Mead Shrine. It's where whoever does it. We don't know who does it. Well, I thought you found him. Well, we found him, but he, we don't know who, actually who he is. We, no. we talked to him, but he, he doesn't. Well, it might be a she. No, I think it's probably someone who works at the BBC More, who's yeah. doing it. It's kind of on the sly. On the sly. Yeah, because the quality is very, very good. Yeah. It doesn't have that sort of, yeah, filmed on my camcorder at home. No, not at all. No. Sorry, there was, a, there was um, another yeah, question. Yeah. You, you, you've talked about French food, food. I just wondered what you thought about um, Italian food versus French food. Well, like if there's, yeah. if there's which one Italian different. food? Or okay, okay, well, which area, which area of Europe would be your, you know, favourite food? Which? Uh... Um, well, I like, I like. Um, there are all sorts of things I like. I like specific things in different places. I like, um, I like Labskaus in northern Germany, which is where Scousers come from. I don't mean they come from there. They actually come from Ireland, don't they? When they, but. Um, um, I like uh, one of the more recent things that I'd, I'd had, which I included in this, uh, was a dish called frico, which um, comes from uh, Trieste and around there, and um, is kind of very sort of um, uh, gastronomically incorrect because it's just lots of potatoes and um, cheese. I mean, it's like bit like tartiflette or something, but much better. Um, and I, I like the cooking of northern Italy. I, the further down you get, the, with the exception of the Jewish quarter of Rome, I'm, I'm not so keen on. Um, but I, there are all sorts of places. I mean, I hate, hate the fine dining restaurants in San Sebastian, but I like the, the bars where one bar will serve just mushrooms and another will do just ham. I mean, those places are great. Um, Whereas the fine dining places are pretentious and ludicrously overpriced, and um, you know how much fawning can one take? There's a great uh, recipe in the book for migas, which you yeah kind of from the from the Bunuel film just done, yeah. which you basically you just invented that to sort of to on the basis of what you could see on the screen. Well, on the screen, I mean, uh, Catherine Deneuve and the guy who plays the bell ringer are eating. Um, tiny croutons about the size of a you know, small fingernail. Um, and it's just the kind of greatest gastronomic thing in all cinema. I mean, it's, 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 it's wonderful. But that's Boonwell. I mean, it's a good recipe. Um, well, that's yeah. one I've made. It's yeah. very good. 
Um, one more. One more. Yeah. How concerned are you with the ambience, the nature of places you eat in? I mean, what I'm saying, I suppose, would you enjoy a, a reasonable meal in a place that you felt happy to be in or content to be in rather than a, a better meal in, some, in, a, in an ambience or an environment that you... You, you didn't like. I mean, with your concern for buildings and interiors and... Um, I don't like noise, um, which, which there's an awful lot of. Um, but I, I... And I don't particularly like some hugely over-designed spaces, but I, I'm, I'm fairly Catholic in... Um, in that matter, um, uh, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, I like um, or used to like La Coupole very much, but I, the, you know, just because it's such a fantastic, great barn of a place. But uh, the last time I went there, it, no one has sort of come to serve us after forty minutes, so we just walked out. Um, so, you know, it, it, it doesn't rarely bother me. I mean, I, pro I probably used to write about it quite a lot, because there was generally very little to say about anything else. Um, but I, it's, now I'm you know, back in Civvy Street and don't have to kind of slog around restaurants. It, it's, um, uh, I mean, so that sounds ungrateful. It's a very nice job to have for a time. <laughs> I mean, but it, it, it becomes, as I said, it becomes tiresome. Um, I'm, I, I'd, I'd sooner go somewhere where you get something good to eat than somewhere which is um, shouting out to kind of be interesting and um, I mean, do you loved. worry, I mean, just, just on that, do you worry that there is this sort of gastronomic monoculture that's kind of everywhere now, that sort of places in London, places in New York, even places in, in, in Europe, you know, sort of kind of Soho House sort of style of brasserie, kind of uh, apparently innovative cooking, but I mean, does that worry you? I mean, it seems to me that you like to eat the, the, the food that is local to the, the place that you're in. If that has a good gastronomic tradition, the food will be good. If it doesn't, it won't be. Aberystwyth, not so much. I can't... Lyon. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of the bouchon in Lyon are really sort of grubby. I mean, they look like sort of, you know, the Quentin Chris school of leaving, you know, leave dust there for long enough and you forget, forget it's there. <laughs> um, and I, li I like these places. Um, but I don't know why I should be worried about restaurant design. I, mean, I, don't, I don't have to think about it any longer, thank God. Um, and, and yes, they are, there is a kind of homogeneity which, yeah. is, which um, is apparent even... I don't, I don't think it, it, it's, it, it's hitting France as well, or Paris. Um, but not so much down your way. No, it's pretty impervious to fashion, I must say. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, do you think that's a kind of a good moment at which to uh, to leave it? Thank you uh, for sharing. I, I mean, obviously, I'm going to say, do read the cookbook, <laughs> buy it if you don't have a copy. Buy two copies uh, and give one to a close friend who likes to cook. Um, but or more, or more. Yeah, <laughs> buy a whole. There's plenty of them here. We've got a warehouse full of them. Um, uh, it has been remarkably well reviewed, and it is selling well. I'm pleased to say, and so it should. It's a, I think, a, a, it, it, it's a, the most original cookbook I've I've read in in, in many a year, and it is both, uh, as I say, it's a book to argue with, but also a book to cook from. So, um, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan.